Right, so welcome to Doctor Who, the 5th Anniversary Specials, Episode 4, An Adventure in Space and Time. Now, right off the bat, I think what we need to talk about with this episode, with this specific TV movie is the cast. Now, obviously, we have David Bradley as William Hartnell. Let's get this straight. The character, obviously, David Bradley appears. He's already appeared in Dinosaurs in a Spaceship in Series 7 as Solomon. He appears here in Adventure in Space and Time, and he also appears in Twice Upon a Time. But to get it straight... In this, in an adventure in space and time, he is portraying the actor, William Hartnell. In Twice Upon a Time, he is portraying the character of the First Doctor. They are two very different characters, very different things he's portraying. The same man, but one of them is, is the man. The other one is the man portraying the character in some aspects, but mostly the man. You, basically, what I'm trying to say is, in this, he's William Hartnell, but in Twice Upon a Time, he's actually the First Doctor. Um, obviously, other than your boy, uh, uh, David Bradley, we have Brian Cox and Sidney Newman. Great casting choice. And um, Brian Cox and Sidney Newman, which is a great choice. We have um, several other connections to Doctor Who in uh, obviously Jessica Rahane, who we previously discussed, appeared in the episode Hyde from Series 7. And Sasha Dewan as Wise Hussein, who well haven't who well hasn't appeared in, in, in an eleventh Doctor episode. He will go on to and already has appeared as the Master in the series twelve episodes Spyfall Part One and Part Two, and the Timeless Children, uh, and its other one in the series twelve episodes Spyfall Part One, Spyfall Part Two, and the Ascension of the Cybermen, the Timeless Children. So you know. There is that, uh, and obviously another thing is that there's a couple of cameos here. You have William Russell, who portrayed Ian Chesterton, who appears as the uh, guard of the entrance to the BBC, I suppose. But other than cast and crew and stuff like that, I think this is just a lovely tale. It's most certainly centred around Bill Hartnell and the tale of his journey from not liking the concept of Doctor Who to being very sad when he had to leave all the way up to his death in 1975. Now, this is obviously very much a classic Who-based concept, no shit. But um, I think it, it definitely tells the story of the beginning of Doctor Who in a very, very good way. Um, like I said, obviously, to see a lot of the people like Verity Lambert is a very important and influential producer in all of TV history. And likewise, Delia Darbush is one of the most important modern composers of, uh, of time, inventing electronic music with the Doctor Who theme, so to see both of them portrayed in this television, in this TV movie is absolutely fucking fantastic. Um, obviously the use of the old BBC building, which I'm not 100% sure if at the time of filming it was unused, or uh, because obviously in 2013 the BBC disused that studio's building and now moved into the new BBC studios, and obviously that's just previously known as the BBC HQ, which was in the news recently as a recording, uh, people tried to storm BBC Studios, but ended up storing the BBC HQ instead, which is, what can I say, but aside from that, the important fact here is that this is written by Mark Gatiss, who wrote many, many a Doctor episodes, and I think it has been known since that he has wanted to uh, recreate and uh, remake the, uh, the episode Marco Polo with the cast and crew of this uh, TV movie, obviously that means, you know, um, the cast and crew, but obviously the David Bradley, who plays the first Doctor and the actress, the actors and actresses portraying um, Susan, Barbara and Ian as well, you know, so I think that would have been a cool concept, but unfortunately it's been 10 years since this was produced, nearly 10 years since this was produced, and I don't think that's going to work. So if they'd have done it in maybe 2015, 2016, 2017, would have been alright, but I think as it's been too long since this was produced, all of these people have aged dramatically, and specifically what we're talking about is the actress who played, who played Susan, Slash Caroline and Vaughn would be uh, probably too old to betray portraying a teenager again. So yeah, but I just want to say that Adventure Space and Time is a fantastic TV movie. Um, and speaking of TV movies, there is the other TV movie associated to Doctor Who, the Doctor Who TV movie. But we'll get to that in due course. But um, like I said, I just really think this is a brilliant telling of of the creation of Classic Who. And me being me, I've seen up to a certain point. And that's not all of the first Doctor yet. I've barely seen any of the first Doctor stuff. 
the first season, I'm in the second season of the first Doctor at this moment, so seeing certain episodes, you know, I, this is the first time I'd watched it since I'd seen stuff like An Unearthly Child, and then the other episodes that I brought up, like, um, uh, the, the, um, the Dalek Invasion of Earth and stuff like that, so seeing those episodes from a behind the scenes, and obviously Marco Polo, which I haven't seen because it's not available, but I know I've seen his deals and watched videos about it, so seeing those episodes, uh, it portrayed in a behind the scenes format was really quite nice and I think as a documentary it's fantastic it's great to see composers De Delia Derbyshire and Brian Hodgson portrayed in this thing very well as well there's another de deleted scene with them that's not used in this episode but um uh, not episode not using this tv film but as a whole I think the film is absolutely fucking fantastic and um you know I genuinely enjoy an adventure in space and time for all that it is and for me that's what makes it you know, a nice and modest and interesting um, sort of extra special extras thing for the fish anniversary stuff. And obviously, this one has music by uh, Edmund Butt, which is actually a very good soundtrack for this for this TV episode. I would have loved to see Murray Gold do it, but to have someone different and new com do a composing for Doctor Who is pretty fucking sick. So, yeah. Um, like I said, I think it, the tale of the creation of Doctor Who here is portrayed fantastically, um, all the cast do fantastic jobs, it's great to see the, well, I mean, I wouldn't describe it as breakdown, but the, the progression of Bill Hartnell and his time and tenure with the show and his, you know, I think one of the most interesting parts of it is this very much portrays the, everyone, obviously he was there from the beginning and everyone around him from the beginning of the show eventually left until, to the point where, towards the end of his tenure, no one from the original cast and crew of the early show was there anymore and I think that's what really fetched him. You see it first, we see Susan leave, then it's Verity, then um, then uh, the other two leave, Susan, Susan uh, Barbara and Ian leave and then you just see it progressively get worse and worse for Bill. Uh, uh, not worse but sort of just progressively, progressively less people you know around him that know him very well to the point where there's a scene where Someone calls him Bill and he says, oh, that's Mr. Hartnell to you, sonny boy. And uh, you you can call me Bill once you get to know me a bit better if you last that long on my show, which is uh, interesting to say the least. But, like I said, I just love to see that portrayal. I think everyone does a fantastic job of, um, you know, in this, uh, this TV movie. And it's, it's great to see... Um, Jessica Rahine and Sasha Dewan opposite each other, two actors who have been in, who have either been in a Doctor Who episode, bef a Doctor Who episode before this T movie and after, in the case of Sasha, you know. So these two that have been in actual episodes of Doctor Who, coming together into Adventure in Space and Time, albeit Sasha being in Doctor Who later on down the line. But um, obviously this was a production in 2013, and, and it's not widely available to singular. I mean, it is, but it isn't. You can buy the DVD, and. Uh, Obviously, the fifth anniversary specials and all that. But yeah, I will be uploading this uh, just as I mentioned before. We move on to the series seven complete, so I have to do that here in the specials as well. So that's going to take at least ten minutes up. But um, I just want to mention that I will be in the description for this video. So if you're hearing this, there is three possible videos you could be hearing this in. Two of which are going to be going up today on the 10th of August. The other, in fact, all three of them will be going up today on the 10th of August, hopefully. And those videos are the Doctor Who the 50th Anniversary Specials review, the Adventure in Space and Time Singular review, where this video will be put up on its own, and the Doctor Who Series 7 Complete Edition review. So those are the three places you'll be able to hear this video that you're listening to right fucking now. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, like I said, um,. I really do enjoy Adventure in Space and Time. After first discovering it as a, as a little thing written by Mark Gatiss, who's one of my favourite, you know, Doctor Who um, related people, I suppose, because he's acted and written in it. So I, he's my personal pick for the next show. But I'd also like to see Kate Heron do it. I'm babbling on, but yeah, and Adventure in Space and Time is is just a really great look into the making of a cultural icon, a incredible, incredibly iconic show. And I think I was thinking to myself towards the end that as much as Bill Hartnell. If it weren't for Bill Hartnell, this show wouldn't exist at all. But I think, when thinking about it, there is two people who this show wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. Bill Hartnell for starting the legacy, and Pat Troughton for continuing it in only a Pat Troughton way. And by that I mean that 
sure Bill Hartnell started it all, and he definitely wouldn't be here if it wasn't for his fantastic portrayal and the episode of the Daleks and all that. But the real one, not to doubt Mr. Hartnell because he's fucking incredible, but I think the real reason, well, not the real reason, but another reason as to why we're still here today, and probably a more important one, is that if Pat Troughton didn't absolutely nail being the second Doctor and the whole concept of a generation, it was all on his shoulders. The future of the show was essentially lying on this man's shoulders. And what a man you chose to do that, can I say. And he does an absolutely fantastic, fantastic job at, you know, you know, making the show come forward and stuff. And to see him come back for, obviously he's one of the actors that's come back for the most episodes of Doctor Who. Uh, returning for the three Doctors, the five Doctors, uh, returning for the three Doctors in 1975. The, uh, sorry, in 1973, the five Doctors in 1983, the two Doctors in 1987 or 6, I can't really remember, and uh, yeah, that's the last Doctor episode he appeared in before his death in 1987, I believe, not 100% sure, I can't remember that. But yeah. Let me just look this history up. But yeah, the man, he was awesome. But yeah, um, he returned, in, the two Doctors were in 1985, by the way. But yeah, before he returned to the show in 1985, before his death in March 1987. But yeah, anyway, back to the Series 7, lovely jubblies. We'll be talking about Series 7 as a whole here, which will, again you'll be hearing in all three parts, but yeah. Series 7, the complete review now, or actually not, I should probably do the 5th chapter, but first, we're going to cover the fudge off, please. Fudge off, bro! We're going to first cover the 5th anniversary specials and what I give them ranking rankings wise. So, the name of the Doctor, uh, that's a solid 8, to be honest with you. The day of the Doctor's a 10, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry, it has to be a 10. Time of the Doctor, that's a 9 as well, and I think Adventure of Space and Time is also a 9. Like I said, the 5th anniversary... Like I said, the 50th anniversary specials are a lot of fun, they're fair, very enjoyable, and they represent a point in Doctor history that is very important. 50 years, and looking back on that now, nearly 10 year old uh, specials and approach, and quickly approaching the 60th anniversary of this incredible show, I think it just lays to rest how culturally impactful this TV show is without anyone really realising for, for, for 60 years, people have been intrigued by this show, this character and his friends and I think that is important to remember but um away from that the series 7 complete review uh complete all the episodes so we've got Asylum of the Daleks we won't for this we won't be including uh, Adventure in Space and Time but we will be including uh Day and Time of the Doctor But yeah, um, so Asylum of the Daleks, I said that was an 8, Dinosaurs in the Spaceship. Um, I honestly am giving it a 7.5 because of Brian Williams. Uh, Town Called Mercy, 7.5, Power of 3, 6. Uh, the Angels Take Manhattan, that's a very high 9. The Snowmen, that's definitely a 9 too, because I really enjoyed the episode. Like any episode with the Paternoster Gang is immediately a 9, by default. Bells of St. John, that's a 9 too, because I like that episode. The Rings of Akatan is a fucking 4. No, the Rings of Akatan is a fucking 5.5. Uh, Cold War, that's a 7.5. 7, 7. Hi, that's a fucking terrible 4. Journey to the Center of the TARDIS. 8. The Crimson Horror, that's a fucking 10, by the way. Nightmare and Silver, that's a good solid 9. Obviously, Name of the Doctor, 9. Day of the Doctor, 10. Time of the Doctor, 9. But yeah.
yeah, this has been, uh, if you're watching this, this has been the, uh, obviously you'll you'll be watching this in three different ways. If you're watching the Adventure in Space and Time review, you've just sat here for 15 minutes and we've been talking about Adventure in Space and Time. Hope you enjoyed that. If you're watching these, uh, 50th anniversary specials, you've just seen me talk about the 50th anniversary specials. And hope you enjoyed that. If you're watching the Series 7 Complete Edition, then you're a real one, because that's going to be over two and a half hours long. Um, but I do appreciate you people sticking in and around as much as possible. So, like I said, there's three different ways you could be watching this visual video. So, I, I appreciate everyone doing that. And, yeah, thank you for being for watching the, the different videos this is in. This has been a lot of fun. Series 7 has been definitely the most... The most specialist episode of the series to review with all the separate parts and components to it. Uh, but thankfully, there is nothing like that going forward from my memory, at least. Uh, other than maybe the series 9 thing where there's two custom specials, but that's nowhere near on the level of this. So, you know, away from that. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, my name has been Jeff. <laughs> no, it's not. And um, I look forward to getting back with the series 8 review and the start of the 12th Doctor era coming very soon. So I'll. Uh, you know, for all three videos, this is going to be cue the outro. There's no singular doubt about it. So, without further ado, for all three different videos, this uh, this is Series Seven Complete Edition review, the uh, Adventure in Space and Time singular review, and the um, Fifth Anniversary specials. Without further ado, it's time to cue that outro. I installed that from Team Park Worldwide, but fuck you, cue that outro.